Welcome to this video which shows you how to format a Word file so it can be converted accurately into an ebook via Kindle or Smashwords. The very first thing to do is to save this file as a .doc file. Currently it's a regular Word file which ends in docx and if you're using OpenOffice, LibreOffice or Apple Pages you need to do the same thing. File, very simple to do, file and save as and there's the title there. Where it's got Word document, go down and click on that, change it to Word 97 to 2003, which ends in dot .doc. If you're in Mac, it'll have Word 97 to 2004, but it will still end in dot .doc. There we go. Why do you do that? Because if you don't, Smashwords will reject it, unfortunately. Kindle will be okay, but Smashwords will reject it. We're trying to do uh, formatting for both at the same time in this video, rather than reading both sets of guidelines. Okay, the next thing to decide is how you're going to demarcate your paragraphs. Are you going to do it like this? First line indentation, or are you going to have spacing between the two? You cannot use both, otherwise Smashwords will reject it. You need to choose one or the other. Now most novels, uh, most newspapers for that matter, or print newspapers, demarcate paragraphs by first line indentation. The first paragraph of a chapter or section will not have first line indentations but all the other ones will. Uh, speaking of which this is a very short document you see I've just got a few things in here finishes with a, an image oh, there's just a blank second page in there and I've got some simple formatting bolded and italicized words bullet pointed and numbered uh, points which are all auto formatted we, we're going to have to fix them a bit later or they play up when you convert them to an ebook but first things first let's change all the text, in fact the whole document, into the normal style. You can do this by using select all uh, or control A in Mac it'll be command A, selecting everything in there. Now you can immediately change it to normal by clicking on it and you say oh, it doesn't look so good I don't know why you wanted me to do that. We're trying to get rid of heaps of uh, variations and formatting while some will still remain because you've applied them um, you've actually got rid of a lot of trash. If you really uh, have to nuke your file, it's called, uh, if there are deep-seated formatting problems which have kept crept in over the years of transferring it between computers, you might actually have to take it all back to plain text. But usually this will do, just taking it back to normal style. We can modify that by right-clicking. I just did a right-click. If you're in Mac, you have to hold down Control and then click if you've got a single-click mouse. But so I can show you on the screen, I'm going to go over to over here to styles and the little arrow head I'm going to click on that. If you're a Mac you're going to have to use manage options to get this uh, particular window up. Now you see it's all a normal I'm going to modify it. There we are, modify. Keep the same name. Body text, change it all to Times New Roman or Georgia if you really don't like Times New Roman but the reader is going to decide ultimately what format they're going to use. That's a huge difference between print and ebooks. The reader decides. 11 or 12 point, I'm going to use 12 point. Uh, the colouring's automatic. I don't want any bolding or italicising. Now down on the next line we've got left align. Change that to justification or justified. Uh, and it'll have a straight left and right edge and uh, it looks really good. Neither of the style manuals recommend that but I reckon it looks much better. Now the important thing, demarcate the paragraphs. Go to format, paragraph and first line. Sound a special here, it's got first line. Change it to about 0.5 or 0.6, that's about standard. If you don't like that you can do it to another size but that's uh, pretty good, 0.5. Get rid of spacing before and after. Now here's a trick. 1.5 line spacing. If you have double, it's too wide, single is too cramped. It is the default position. Yes, on most readers you can change it, but a lot of people don't know how to do that. Uh, line and page breaks, get rid of widow and orphan control. Uncheck that because uh, that um, pushes paragraphs onto the next page or back. And hit OK and you're ready to go. And that'll stay the same for the moment because it's all a normal. Um, the bolder words are bolder, the italicized words are italicized, which is great because if you've got a, a novel with 100,000 words and every so often you've italicized something, well, you don't want to have to go and find them. You can uh, put them back in, but hopefully you won't have too many problems with bullet points. Um, you've got to insert them. Uh, we'll do that in a minute, but first we've got to look for blank spaces and tabs that might be in there. Fortunately, when we converted everything to normal, 
some of the indented paragraphs, and here we are on the third line, I'm just clicking on the third paragraph. This was indented by a tab, just by hitting the tab button. Don't do this because it uh, realigns to every different system. So we've got rid of the tabs here, but if you click up here on the paragraph mark, so up here, you'll see all the hiddens, and all of a sudden you say, oh, there are five spaces to indent the first line of the paragraph. If you do that, don't. <laughs> I've just shown you the proper way to actually do the first line indentation. But if you've got a manuscript now that has got all these uh, spaces to indent the paragraphs, well, you better get rid of them. The fastest way would be to go to Find and Advanced Find. Similar to Mac, go to Advanced uh, Find and Replace. And then you just tap in however many you're used to uh, putting spaces. You're used to putting in one, two, three, four, five. In this case, you can't see much in the screen, but we're going to replace them with nothing. And if you had a whole book, hit replace all, they'll all go. And likewise, you can do that if you want to find double spaces in your book. Uh, one replacement was made, that's all I had there. So that's now gone. We'll just go back up and have a look. See, it's gone. And that part of the, the job is done. Now we're going to look at how to separate the chapters. Now here I've got chapter one and two. Uh, have no more than four paragraph marks in a row. So I've got four there. Click. So in this one, or it could be this, this one here, but I'm going to click on this one and go insert page break. And there you go, you have separated the two chapters. You go through and do this all the way through and you'll get your chapter separation. For the first paragraph of each chapter, do you know they're, notice they're still indented and they shouldn't be. I'm going to set up a new style which is aimed at um, getting rid of this first line indentation, but it's not as simple as doing none, and I'll explain why in a minute. What I'm going to do is go back to the Home tab, and if, you're, if you've got this Styles pane open, in Windows you create a new style by clicking on the bottom left here. In Mac there'll be a green button with a right, white arrow somewhere in this area here, but I'm going to click on New Style. Name the new style, whatever you like. Well, if you use Heading 1, it'll say that's already taken, but I'm going to call this Normal Start. And I'm going to make one important difference. I'm going to base it on Normal. See this? I'm basing it on Normal. I'm just keeping all those parameters, but I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm just going to change one thing, and it's going to be not... I'm not going to say None, because guess what? If Kindle see None, it just forces the first line indentation anyway. I'm going to put in point. 0, 1 of a centimetre, which is one tenth of a millimetre. I challenge anyone to be able to see that in a hurry. Click OK. Have a look at that first paragraph. See, it looks as though it's not indented at all. And I'll do the same to the first paragraph in the next chapter. And I'm just going to hit Normal Start up there. OK, that part's done. We've still got one more thing to do before we move on to headings, and that's look at these bullet points and numbered points. If you've used bullet points, you can put in end dashes or asterisks, as I'm going to put in an asterisk. Hold down Shift and um, asterisk. Now, when you hit the space bar, it'll go into auto formatting. You don't want that, so undo. Control Z on Windows or Command Z on Mac. Now, immediately some people would be thinking, well, hang on, what about if I put the correct ASCII character in for a bullet point? Well, guess what? The reader may not be able to do read that, and you're going to end up with a bit of nonsense. So use the asterisk uh, or N dash. Um, I'm going to use numbers here, just regular numbers on the numbered points to take care of things. If you want to know where a dash is, and I'll just show you one here, um, you can do it by going into Insert Symbol and looking for more symbols. Go to Special Characters. There's an N dash. Don't use an M dash, by the way. Uh, use the N. It's the width of a capital N for Nelson. There it is. Just put it in there. and I'm going to close that. And it's not going to have any auto formatting. So you could use either one. I'm going to be consistent, though, and use the asterisk. And if you would like any other styles, you can set up new styles, as I've already shown you how, and apply them. But now it's time to move on to headings. Let's have a look at the headings. Chapter 1 doesn't look too flash. Let's click on Heading 1. Okay, that's looking a bit better. 
Why I've written this heading uses heading one style. That was when I was writing the book. I was applying styles, but chapter two, I was just getting the normal font and just clicking and highlighting it and then changing it to blue and making it a different font and size. So that's why one changed and the other didn't. I'm going to now get rid of this text here. I don't need that anymore. And I'm going to modify heading one. I'm going to click over here, modify. First of all, I'm going to change the font to just a regular Calibri, a very common sans serif font. You don't want unusual fonts so they can turn to junk on some people's readers. They uh, can't cope with it. Uh, 16 point font, don't go more than 18. You can have bold if you want. Oh, look, I'll leave bold on. Sometimes I wouldn't. Font color, if you want to change that, maybe you want more colors. I really like a dark blue for chapter headers. It's something nice about, um, I click OK now. Oh, no, I better check the formatting before I do that. Paragraph. Oh, yes, it has got a first line indentation. Well, that makes sense. It was based on normal. Get rid of that now. Keep it centered and get rid of spacing before or after. Click OK. Now we're right to click OK. There it is. So there's the uh, chapter heading. You can put more spaces in underneath. You can put two or three if you want. And chapter two, I'm going to apply that with one click of the button. And that's the whole purpose of style. Uh, so you don't have to apply four or five parameters at a time. Uh, you can just do it with one click. So there we go. That's pretty much ready to go with headings. If we did want to put in a second level heading, click on heading level two, and you'll notice that heading level three appears automatically. Once you do that, it says, oh, is it going to be another one if you want? Now you can modify that if you would like, but don't have more than three levels of headings. It gets confusing in an ebook. So I'm just going to keep that at heading one, and then we'll look now at how to insert images into the book. At the moment, there is one image here, and it's probably been copy and pasted because uh, a lot of people have done that rather than using insert picture. If you have done insert picture, well, great. But I also suspect that this file is not going to be the right size. In an ebook, an image should be no wider than 600 pixels and no higher than 800 pixels. What the hell does that mean? Well, first of all, I'm going to click on this image to get rid of it because um, if it is OK, well, uh, I can just put it back in it, but I suspect it's not. I'm going to go into where the image is stored. There it is, the Bells Beach pick. And as soon as I see it's nearly 2,000 uh, kilobytes, I suspect, yeah, that's going to be way too big. I'm now going to fire up paint.net. Here's paint.net. I'm just going to open that up. Free and downloadable from the internet. Uh, for Windows, if you want the Mac equivalent, go to Pinter, P-I-N-T-A, and download that. Then I'm going to open that file, File and Open. Pretty intuitive. Double click to open it. And there it is. There's the Bells Beach pick. Go to Image and Resize to see how big it is. Whoa, over 2,500 pixels wide. Now, importantly, the resolution is at 72 pixels or an inch or per inch, 72 PPI, if I can say that quickly. And that is absolutely fine for an ebook. You can make it bigger if you want, but 72 is fine. But the width is, that's the resolution, so how clear it is or how fuzzy it is. Uh, the width I'm going to change to 600. Remember I was saying that's the maximum width. And no, notice that automatically the height is adjusted uh, so it's still in proportion. And that's why I've got maintain aspect ratio clicked. If you unclick that, well, it wouldn't maintain that um, proportion. I'm going to click OK. The file will look a little bit smaller. That's OK. That's what we want. Now to save it, file save as, save it as a JPEG. Look, there are lots of other formats you can use. JPEG, simplest and best. It really is. Now, I'm going to give that to just put another digit in there, say it's the second version. Have a look at the file size up in the middle. It says 126.6 kilobytes, and the quality of the save is 98%. If I boost it up to 100, it becomes 209 kilobytes. Well, Kindle asks you to keep the file sizes under 127. So conveniently, that is 100, under 127. If you did do something that was 200 kilobytes, yeah, look at it, would compress it down. Um, so don't worry too much if it's over 127, because some will be. Uh, but you don't want them too big, because otherwise the file size gets too big and clunky. So that's done. That's saved. I'm going to go, just uh, quit paint now. 
I'm now going back to my file. When you insert a picture, you need to leave a break between paragraphs. And usually I leave three paragraph marks, but their first line indented. I don't want them first line indented. I'm going back to the Home tab, clicking on Normal Start. Here it is, Normal Start. So the image itself will not be indented half a centimeter. I'm going to click on the middle image here and insert the JPEG. So we could have text underneath. You can't do a text wrap around the image, by the way, like you can in print. In ebooks, you just find a space between the paragraphs, put in some paragraph marks. You don't have to have three, you could just have one. I like to have three generally. And then I'm going to click the center align button, and that's where I'm going to insert the pic. Insert picture. It could be photo and Mac, I think, but insert picture. Now here's the picture. I'm going to insert it. And there it is, inserted. And that'll be the right size. It's gone onto the next page. That's absolutely fine. One final thing to do is we're going to do an external hyperlink. Now you'll want at least one of these in your ebook, even if it's at the end. So readers can click on a link and go to your website or your blog or even to a retailer a page where your book is selling. So you highlight the words you want uh, to be linked. I'm just going to grab those for their smash words. Smash words will reject your, and I could just grab smash words, but um, I'm going to show you that whatever you grab, you can actually link. You go to insert hyperlink or control K or command K and Mac. Make sure it's on existing file or web page. And so at the top here, text to display, I've got the four words here. Now I could go to the internet and copy and paste uh, and then paste in an address here. I'm going to link to smashwords.com. If you're using Mac, you'll find that this address will be up at the top here and it'll say, you know, link to what, and you'll put in the address there. Once you hit OK, you'll see that the words that you selected have all been turned to blue and underlined. And that will be your link. So if you didn't want all of those words, that's okay. You could just um, do it, just smash words by itself. But now I'm going to hold down Control and click to go to the internet. If you're using a Mac, you can just click. And there it is, there's smash words. Boots up, shows me smash words. And you can see how it's a really useful thing for going onto the internet. It could be in the middle of your book. You might want to support some argument with a reference to a website, or it might be something like an appendix uh, right in the middle of your text. You don't have to wait till the end of the book. So a very handy thing to be able to uh, use hyperlinks. Now, your document is now ready to save. I'm going to save this, save as, and I'm going to call it completed. Make sure it's the word dot doc. And this is now ready to upload, believe it or not. I'll get rid of those pilcrows in case they're worrying you. They're the paragraph marks. But it's now nice and cleanly formatted. You've got the bolded and italicized words in there. The bullet points and number points are all fine. You've got the correct size of image inserted properly. And you're ready now. This file could be uploaded to Kindle or Smashwords. And the other file you'll need, of course, is your cover file. But that's another video, another time. For the moment, that's your Word file already and taken care of. And if you followed all this, you've just saved yourself a few hundred dollars or someone doing it for you. Thank you very much.